I wish to extend a very warm welcome to our most revered, our most uh, beloved Honorary President. Uh, sir, uh, we have had two great days. I just wanted to give you a know, very brief uh, eight minutes that have been assigned to me, a gist of what uh, happened during these two days. Sir, we had a great uh, start to our Festival of Innovation. It started, of course, with your most uh, inspiring speech. Sir, you had a message for building a bright future for our currently troubled world with increasing inequality, increasing uh, social disharmony. And that message was Gandhian model of decentralized, distributed, and diversified innovation-based enterprises. Sir, I've been following the web, and this message has really created a rare galvanization. Uh, this message is something that has touched the heart of everyone. And really, this is reverberating in the ears of everyone. So we have had uh, ground, uh, global roundtables uh, besides uh, the exhibitions. Uh, for in 2017, I'm very happy to say, has participation from 14 nations, from US, Europe, Asia Pacific, and uh, Africa, uh, with some of the great thought leaders, Latin with, and Latin America. And we have had some very great thought leaders, uh, each bringing to the table fresh thoughts, fresh ideas, new experiences. Uh, I'm particularly happy to mention our friend Francis uh, Curry, uh, the Director General of WIPO, as we were discussing in the morning, it is not word intellectual property organization, but it is actually word innovation promotion organization. Their role, sir, is uh, much greater. So it was wonderful to have uh, all these uh, uh, great thought leaders. So the discussion on two days uh, focused on diverse aspects of building a robust, sustainable, national and international inclusive innovation ecosystem. And uh, the issues that were discussed range from education to public policies, to startups, to <coughs> incubators, uh, to accelerators, to divorce uh, uh, incentives that we could provide. And of course, we have just completed two out of the seven days, and this will uh, continue. So one thing was uh, evident that we recognize that festival of innovation is not just festival of ideas. From ideas to innovation is a long, hard journey. And it is not just the power of idea that matters, but the power of execution that matters. And therefore, a lot of discussion was on how do we achieve this with speed, with scale, with uh, sustainability. So what was uh, especially inspiring uh, was the issue of making things happen in the face of uh, uh, adversity. Uh, there are a number of examples I won't cite all, but for example, uh, uh, we have this uh, home for 25,000 tribal children, KG to PG, uh, in Orissa that uh, Dr. Achutta Asaman uh, described. Uh, we heard Dr. Gurudip Singh yesterday, the Vice Chancellor of Vinodhava University, uh, sir, it's one of the biggest universities with 0.3 million students. And so the ratio of teacher to student is a staggering one is to 400. And despite that adversity, they did innovation, making the toppers in the class teach other students. They didn't have resource, but they were resourceful and they created labs and laboratories. So they were heart-rending uh, stories. Finally, I come to today, we in the morning had uh, this uh, Gandhian uh, Young Technology Innovation Awards. Sir, every word is significant because Gandhi, Gandhian values, sir, you referred to that yesterday, technologies which are based on the Gandhian values, and most importantly, the young. And we had uh, uh, awards being given uh, thanks to the partnership with Bayrak and DBT who have supported uh, uh, fellowships and awards very handsomely. Uh, what was very refreshing to find was that these young people from IITs and NITs actually were trying to make high technology work for the poor. And that, sir, augurs 
very well. Uh, we, uh, uh, sir, on the other hand, in the morning, honored uh, Gundurao from uh, coastal Karnataka. Sir, he showed why India is a rich country where poor people live, and he has created, as a matter of fact, a rich collection of 154 paddy varieties. Uh, in a way, it is the, our poor maintaining the rich diversity of the nation. That was very touching, sir. Finally, I'd like to end, sir, by thanking you again for uh, supporting us, encouraging us, challenging us, setting higher and higher sights uh, for us, uh, for achievement. Uh, all that I can do, assure you, on behalf of uh, all of us present here, as well as those not here, that will give every ounce of our energy to make your dreams uh, come true of an innovative, of an creative, a collaborative, and empathetic society. Thank you very much. We have a very special guest of honor this year with us, a great champion, as Dr. Mushlika just described, of innovation promotion uh, around the world through various instruments, one of which is Innovation Index. I request Francis Gary, the, the Director General of WIPO, to share his thoughts. Your Excellency, Mr. President, it's really an honor to have this opportunity to make a few observations uh, to you this afternoon. I've been asked to address uh, India's performance in the Global Innovation Index, which is an index that measures innovation capacity and performance across uh, 150 countries uh, in the world. Last year, uh, in the 2016 Global Innovation Index, India rose some 15 places. Uh, but its positioning in, in the index is perhaps not as high as one would expect uh, uh, for a country as innovative and with the resources that India does have. So uh, please allow me to make three brief sets of observation. One about uh, what the index sees as the strengths uh, uh, and uh, the areas of strength of India. Uh, uh, and the areas in which India performs perhaps less well on the index. Uh, secondly, uh, what there is for WIPO, the World Intellectual Property Organization, to do uh, as a consequence of this interaction that we have had the privilege to uh, participate in. Uh, and lastly, perhaps one or two uh, small suggestions for the Indian side. So as far as the index is concerned, I think we have to recall that it is an index, so it measures average performance, uh, and this means that a large, diverse country is less well favored by the measurement of the index. And if you look at the countries which come into the top group of the uh, index, they tend to be small, homogenous economies, such as Switzerland, Sweden, the Scandinavian countries. The larger, more diverse countries because it's measured across the whole country, tends to do, uh, less, tend to do less well. Uh, the strengths that India has uh, are, of course, that it's a large and uh, fast-growing uh, market. It is considered to be an innovation outperformer, that is, uh, a country that performs better than other countries at the same level of e economic development. And so, as the country uh, as the economy rises, so too will the innovation performance as a natural consequence. Uh, there are strengths obviously in human capital, top universities have a very high quality, uh, and there are uh, strengths in ICT service exports and creative goods exports. On the areas where India does less well, uh, perhaps one to mention is the ease of doing business and of starting a new business as measured by the World Bank uh, uh, Index for doing business. But this is of course an area that is being addressed by the government at the moment. Uh, for the World Intellectual Property Organization as we, as we evolve uh, the index in the future, as a consequence of this uh, interaction I think uh, that there are two observations that I would made, make in particular. First, we have to, I think, make an effort to accommodate the circumstances of large, diverse economies uh, in a better manner and better reflect the performance of large, diverse economies. This applies, of course, not just to India, but also to the United States of America and to uh, China. 
uh, which tend to be less favoured by the index. Uh, we believe that the efforts underway to create a state index for innovation in India will certainly assist in this regard. Um, secondly, I would say uh, we need to find a way to better reflect the comprehensive nature of innovation that occurs in a country like India, where you have the very top uh, of innovation, the top performance uh, in science and technology, and you also have, as has been emphasized throughout these days, grassroots innovation. We do not capture in the Global Innovation Index sufficiently well grassroots uh, innovation. Uh, on the side of India, perhaps uh, two suggestions. We are working with the government to improve data collection and to better reflect the data uh, that is available in the index. Uh, and lastly, if I may make a suggestion for consideration, uh, there is an area of intellectual property called utility model protection. So utility models, it's not without controversy. Uh, they are not adopted in all countries, but they are adopted in, let's say, around about 50 countries of the world. And notably, they originated in Germany, and they have been su successfully used in Japan, in China, and in the Republic of Korea. Uh, what is the difference between a utility model and a patent? Well, uh, utility models are directed at incremental innovation. Uh, so this might be something to consider when trying better to capture and to reward the grassroots innovation that is so rich uh, in this country. Uh, as I said, it is not without controversy because some countries believe that a proliferation of property rights is not necessarily a, a good thing. However, uh, it is a relatively uh, easily administered system because there is generally no examination uh, and the, di the principal difference with a patent is that for a utility model the invention to qualify must be new but need not have the same level of conceptual ingenuity that is generally measured by inventive step. Uh, so it can be a very successful form and uh, we would suggest that consideration be given to the subject matter. I thank you very much, Mr. President. I request the Honorable President to kindly give us her blessings. Good evening. Professor Maselkar, Dr. Francis Guri, DG WIPO, Professor Anil Gupta, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. I'm afraid my voice has been broken because of cold, but I do hope I'll be audible and clear to all of you. Let me compliment the distinguished national and international delegates for participating in this important global roundtable on inclusive innovations. I have had the benefit to listen to Dr. Francis Guri, DG, WIPO, and Dr. Ali Maselka, Chairperson, National Innovation Foundation today. I am thankful to both of them for sharing their knowledge and insights on this relevant theme for sharing that uh, in this relevant theme of inclusive innovations. This topic, to my mind, is pertinent for any nation pursuing an inclusive development agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, in days of high venture democracy, the preamble of our constitution, which we adopted long ago, in 1950, proclaims to secure to the citizens justice, social, economic, and political, liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith, and worship, equality of status and of opportunity, and fraternity to assuring 
the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation. Equality and freedom has no meaning unless it is accompanied with opportunity to realize one's aspirations and potentiality and enjoyment of benefits of growth and development. Development is real when it is inclusive, when the last person feels being a part of the narrative of progress. Innovation has a strong linkage with development, particularly grassroots innovation of which India has a long tradition, is important in alleviating the day-to-day -day problems of human lives. The stimuli to innovate are many, from basic survival to fueling of growth. A healthy ecosystem can harness the innovative potential of the population. While I am optimistic about the prospects of inclusive innovation in our country, I too have a few concerns which I want to share on this platform. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, the quality of education in our schools and colleges, universities, has scope for much improvement. Education is the seed of the nation's destiny. Without a strong foundation of education, ability of communities to benefit from other infrastructural resources for development remains limited. I am told that NIF has scouted thousands of innovators and traditional knowledge holders many of whom did not allow lack of education to come in their way of innovating new solutions. Undoubtedly, with better tools and better access to education, they may have done much better. We need to bring an empathetic stress on inclusive innovation in our learning modules in the educational system. <coughs> Many central institutions of higher learning, about 86 of them, have opened innovation clubs. These clubs search for inclusive innovations in the hinterland of their locations, spread the innovations developed, invite in innovators to classrooms or labs to understand their motivation and identify unmet needs of society and try to address them through their projects. Reciprocity and responsibility must become an inalienable part of learning exchanges between the formal and informal sectors. I urge the educational planners and thinkers to consider transformation of pedagogic approach towards learning. I have had the opportunity to interact with grassroots innovators on various occasions. Seeing their innovation make me hopeful that in the near future we will be able to make the life of people especially the disadvantaged section, more comfortable. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, the role of science and technology in leveraging inclusive innovations is evident when we see the pivotal contributions made by the Indian Space Research Organization helping fishermen in high seas 
farmers through weather forecasts and students through dissemination of educational content has been made possible through space technology applications at grassroots levels. Early investment in science and technology has given us rich dividends. We need to continue providing impetus to science education and research in our institutions. Developing an innovation culture is crucial. The INSPIRE Manak program of the Department of Science and Technology emphasizes the mobilization of one million ideas from half a million schools at the rate of two ideas per school. This initiative will help build a spirit of creativity and ingenuity amongst the young students. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, to make grassroots innovators more inclusive, we need a strong mechanism for dispersal and quick adoption of ideas. I am told that many public sector scientists do not charge any cost for the time used in validating and value-adding grassroots innovations. Many intellectual property firms also do the same. Let me compliment them for their service, which has helped in harnessing IPR support for local communities and grassroots innovators. The concept of technology co <coughs> technology commute used by NIF allowed few community members to use the innovative ideas of others for non-commercial purposes has also helped it wider dissemination of innovations. These positives should continue unabated. Distinguished participants, the benefit of innovation will accrue when an idea gets converted into a useful product. For that, a strong environment for starting new enterprises is necessary. Microventure finance, and not just microfinance will help users in entrepreneurial undertakings at the grassroots. The Autol Innovation Mission has started tinkering labs in schools. Many incubators have been set up by government departments such as science and technology, biotechnology. While these are steps in the right direction, we should simulate simultaneously think of popularizing the in situ incubation model of innovation enterprises. This would enable young people to stay with families back home in villages and small towns and will pursue their entrepreneurial aspirations. The emphasis on incubation of startups and promoting entrepreneurship at an early stage is welcome development. However, we should expand the opportunities for students to start new technology and social innovation best inclusive business. Ladies and gentlemen, the government has started several platforms under the Digital India program to directly connect with citizens and receive their feedback. This is a form of participative governance. I see this as a healthy trait. It provides clues about how to make public services more responsive to the rising aspirations of our people. We should not let scale become an impediment to sustainability. 
there are still challenges which are location of niche specific they need solutions to public policy must provide incentives for addressing such unmet social needs for the betterment of our nation with these few words i conclude i thank all the delegates once again i hope you have the time to visit the blooming mughal gardens while you are here spread the spirit of vasudhai vakutumbakam the world whole world is one family in your social and policy network remember that no country can embark upon its own development path without including the development of the less privileged i wish you all a happy spring and joyful engagement with the grassroots innovators in making this world a happier healthier and harmonious place thank you Thank you.